Hello, and welcome back. It is time we begin video 3 of the induction process. In this video we shall cover hazard identification and assessment, safety at work, personal protective equipment, and HSSE communications. Get comfortable. There is a lot of information to cover in this video. I will do the talking. You do the reading. Let's begin. In this section we will discuss hazard identification and risk assessment. You will need to understand our process as there are parts of the hazard assessment process you may be responsible for developing to enable the safe execution of work. Some parts of the process, you may need to participate in either review or field implementation. The process is simple, but important to protect the health and safety of everyone involved in our work activities. Hazard identification and risk assessment process are work planning tools used to evaluate if any particular situation or task that may have the potential to cause harm or loss to people, equipment, assets, and even the reputation of Boscalis. During this process the three main goals are to, identify known or foreseeable hazards that may have the potential to cause harm. Analyze and evaluate the risk associated with that hazard to determine the possible outcomes if workers were directly exposed to the hazard. Determine appropriate ways to eliminate the hazard, or control the risk when the hazard cannot be eliminated. Overall, the goal of hazard identification and risk assessment process is to assess the work activities, and determine safest methods to protect against known or foreseeable risks. Now, look at the image below. It is a good depiction of how hazards differ from the risks. If we identify a hazard, it is simply something with only the potential to cause harm or loss. Some hazards may be no, be the nature of our work. Some are unknown. There are the ones which require us to examine the work we will be performing, and work location to discover. The risk is the likelihood of that hazard causing the harm or loss. Unless you interact with the hazard, you won't encounter the risk. By doing so, no harm or loss cannot normally occur. This is why taking the time to plan the work, communicate the plan, and coordinate the efforts is critical to ensure a safe and productive workplace. How will we do that here you ask? Let's keep going to find out. Identifying hazards is only a part of the process. Follow this simple diagram. It shows us that once we know the work activity and the workplace, we need to assess each for known, or foreseeable hazards first. Then we scan for those hidden or unknown hazards. Next, assess those hazards for risks. What could go wrong? Why would things go wrong? What harm or loss could occur? What would be the severity of the risk if a worker was directly exposed to it? Now that you have assessed the risks, we need to control them. This could be through elimination of the risk. Engineering controls. Administrative controls. Replacing parts of the plan or equipment used to do the job, and the use of personal protective equipment. We need to also evaluate if the controls will create additional hazards that need to be assessed. Once we have chosen the controls, they need to be implemented. And throughout the work, we need to monitor for effectiveness, how suitable the controls are, and if new risks arise. If during the implementation and review process new risks arise, stop, and evaluate the work again. It is better to take the time to do it right than to suffer the outcomes from performing risky work without a solid plan. Work method statements or WMS A detailed WMS is required for each activity within our scope of work. These are normally developed by the works manager or a superintendent in consultation with members of the workforce involved in the activity and reviewed or updated routinely. Each WMS is reviewed and approved by a project director. Changes to an approved WMS shall follow our management of change procedure. Identify related hazards and potential risks of the activities. The WMS documents the controls necessary to manage hazards which aim to prevent harm or loss to people, environment, assets, and reputation. Risk assessments. Appropriate measures must be taken to eliminate or reduce the risk of hazards in the workplace to a level as low as reasonably practicable. After a work method statement is completed, the next step is to assess it for known or foreseeable risks. 
Once a risk assessment has been conducted, and known or foreseeable hazards are identified, corrective methods to eliminate the hazards, or hazard control measures must be put into place. Recognizing and evaluating the risks associated with hazards on the work site is only the first step in the hazard control process. Additional actions or methods to control these identified hazards must be developed and implemented to eliminate the risks. Job Hazard Analysis of JHA the JHA is a procedure which integrates accepted health and safety principles and practices into specific tasks or work scope. A documented JHA is required to be developed for all site activities and complements the permit to work. Is developed prior to commencement of a specific activity or task. Must provide details on the sequence of work. Equipment to be used at each stage, known or foreseeable hazards to be controlled what could go wrong and the risks to workers, and the controls needed to safely complete the job. Let's look at several simple tips to developing an effective JHA first. Be realistic and choose methods and controls that are achievable. The methods used to complete the job need to make sense, and be easily understood by all workers involved. Update the JHA as changes arise. Complete the JHA ahead of the work, not on the day of the job. If a control is missing or not available, stop. Rethink the plan and how to complete it safely. Do not write a jar out onto a field-level risk assessment. Remember, to obtain a permit to work, you will need to present a completed JHA. Field-level hazard assessments or FLHA A field-level risk assessment is a daily hazard assessment completed at the work location, prior to starting work tasks. The FLHA is an industry standard and are used to identify hazards and establish controls to eliminate or reduce risks to acceptable levels, and capture those residual hazards and risks not identified on AJHA. AFLHA is final component of the project's hazard identification and risk control process used by workers prior to the start of a new task or even returning from a coffee break. They are reviewed by supervision and other workers, including visitors entering the work area. The FLHA is developed by front-line workers in the field or job location. The supervision role is to review, comment, and if satisfied that the work can be completed safely, sign off on the FLHA. The FLHA is routinely developed by supervisors and workers. At the beginning of a new task or a new shift. When work spans long breaks. When the size of the crew changes. When there is a change that affects the execution of the work. When new hazards are introduced as a result of the work activities, or other work groups. When the information about the work changes. When site conditions change. The FLHA documents the steps involved in completing a task, the hazards and risks associated with each step and the controls that need to be put into place to eliminate or reduce the risk to acceptable levels. YES Scan The YES Scan is the last-minute risk assessment process used by Boscalis. It is an individual assessment done by workers before starting a task and during the execution of that task. This NINA process is a simple, effective and proactive behavior-based assessment designed to Focus worker attention when completing a specific task. Taking time when workers arrive at their work location to scan for unanticipated hazards. Assess the task for hazards and risks. Identify and eliminate unsafe behaviors and hazardous conditions. Aims to create a culture where workers are constantly assessing their own actions and work site for hazards. Every 20 minutes, take 20 seconds to look 20 feet around you for hazards. You may be surprised at what you see throughout your shift. Take a few moments to review some of the general hazards you may find on a daily basis in your work areas. This is not an exhaustive list. Depending on what you are working on, and where, there may be many more hazards and risks which need to be assessed and controlled. One of the high-level hazards that there is always a potential for when dredging is hydrogen sulfide, or H2S for those working in areas where H2S may occur in low levels, awareness and specific training will be provided. This will be primarily for those working on the vessels. 
All personnel on board the vessels shall be required to wear a functioning personal gas detection monitor during the dredging operations. Personnel must also be familiar with the locations and use of emergency escape packs. All right. Moving on. Let's now talk about safety at work. We will touch on some of the important topics and programs used within Boscalis. New and Young Workers Program. This program includes workers who are new to site, new to industry, or a young worker under age of 25. New or young worker must demonstrate a suitable level of knowledge to their supervisor before removing or replacing the sticker or changing their hard hat color. Some of these knowledge areas include, but is not limited to, Boscalis policies and procedures, hazard identification and risk assessment processes, emergency preparedness and response, competencies and workmanship, rules, responsibilities, and expectations. Incident reporting selection, use, maintenance, and storage of tools, equipment, and personal protective equipment. A new or young worker is a person that is under the age of 25, new to site and industry or has the industry experience but is working in a new job type or discipline. They may also be new to a job location, vessel or project with unique hazards or requirements. Our program ensures that new and young workers are identified, supervised, trained and evaluated to prevent incidents that result in harm or loss, to people, the environment, assets, or reputation. The program also allows for one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching to improve safety, quality and performance. Participation as this program is required, it is not optional. A checklist must be completed with both the mentor and NYW. This will be signed off by their direct supervisor, barge master, or captain. All new and young workers shall be identified by a green hard hat or green hand sticker for the first roster rotation of six weeks or equivalent during which the worker will be mentored and assessed. Permit to work or PTW Boscalis and subcontractors working onshore will use the LNGC permit to work system to manage high-risk activities. Supervision must have LNGC permit to work training before they can request an LNGC permit. Nearshore work, which includes vessels and barges, will use the Boscalis fleet management system. Take a look at some of the examples requiring APTW. Light duty vehicles. All project vehicles are enabled with an in-vehicle monitor system. This monitors and generates reports on driver's performance. All drivers must, have a current government-issued driver license with no restrictions, complete defensive and winter driving training, complete daily pre-trip inspections. Not use cellular communication or other mobile devices while driving. Never pass a bus displaying four-way flashes. Only a right turn signal engaged indicates safe to pass. Always drive in a defensive manner. Yield the right of way and priority of vehicle type. Bus, heavy vehicle. Light vehicle. Pedestrians and mobile equipment. While working on site, all persons working for or with Boscalis must wear high visibility clothing and personal protective equipment outside designated PPE free areas. Use designated walkways and crosswalks. Walk, never run in work areas. Make eye contact with operators before or crossing paths. Never approach equipment from an operator's blind spots. Safe transfer of personnel. There are several simple things to remember to safely transfer personnel to and from vessels. Always obey the directions given. Never jump between vessels. Only one person transfers at a time. Always maintain three points of contact. No carry-on luggage is to be held when transferring between vessels. All persons must wear APFD no exceptions. Help others to safely transfer. Sometimes we just need a little help from a friend. Flagging, barricades and tags. When installing flagging tapes or barricades, they must be selected based on the hazard and level of risk. Soft barricades such as tape, should not be used where there is imminent risk. Hard barricades should be used. Yellow caution tape identifies a hazard where persons entering in or crossing through must be aware of. 
Red danger tape indicates a hazard where there is a high risk of harm or loss and must not be crossed or entered without specific permission. All flagging must be removed and disposed of when the hazards are no longer present or work has completed. All barricade tapes and hard barricades require that an information tag is installed. Tags will contain the following information. Company name. Supervisor name. Radio channel or telephone number. Date of installation, and a brief hazard description. Controlling construction work sites and vessels. Signage must be installed at the entrances to our work areas. These must be maintained and updated on a regular basis. Visitors who would like to access the work areas must report to the Boscalis site office to receive a visitor orientation and a briefing on what is happening in the work area. Visitors must sign in and be escorted at all times. Crew and visitor tracking sheets must be maintained at all times in case of an emergency situation where a count is required in preparation for evacuation. All persons entering into a work area must review the applicable permit to work, and the hazard assessments for that area. No exceptions. Site visits. Visitors to onshore work sites. Hazards at active work areas can lead to serious injuries for both to the workers and site visitors. Boscalis and subcontractors are responsible for controlling their sites and protecting all from any hazards that could arise from direct or indirect exposure to construction activities. All visitors must have received the visitor induction and be in possession of the appropriate PPE visitors shall not be permitted to operate any vehicle or equipment. Visitors are not permitted to engage in hands-on work. When visitors require access to a vessel or barge they must inform the captain of their visit. Complete the vessel orientation upon first arrival on the vessel. Follow the barge master or captain's instructions at all times. Be informed of hazards and no-go zones. Must be accompanied at all times. Not be permitted to operate any ship function or equipment while on board. Housekeeping. Simply put. A clean workplace is a safer workplace overall. We must all take the time to maintain good housekeeping throughout the shift and adhere to waste management requirements. Inspections will be conducted routinely that will gauge our performance and identify opportunities for improvement. Workplace inspections. Workplace inspections will be done on a routine basis to monitor site conditions and compliance with our HSSE requirements. Other inspection teams may arrive on the work site to complete these such as LNGC Work Safe BC Transport Canada. Senior Management. Continuous good performance and compliance must be maintained throughout the job. If something is identified during an inspection and it can be remedied right away, do so. Don't wait, fix it on the spot. You may prevent someone from being hurt. Right. Let's move on to personal protective equipment. In this section we will learn some of the minimum requirements for the work site. Remember, additional PPE may be required based on the work you are doing and what was identified in a hazard assessment. While on any LNGC or Boscalis work site, all persons, including visitors and subcontractors, must wear suitable personal protective equipment for the work activities, and in any active work areas meeting project requirements. Specific or specialized PPE may be required for the work activities. Ask supervision if you are not sure of what is needed. The use of PPE is a condition of employment, and all employees are responsible for correct use, storage, maintenance and timely replacement of supplied PPE. All Boscalis employees will be provided with PPE and will be required to complete the receipt of PPE form. PPE free zones shall be identified by signage and plans. Let's go through the minimum PPE for the work site. You will need to read the information to the right of each symbol which identifies the requirements for the specific piece of PPE first. All persons must wear an ANSI or CSA approved hard hat in the work areas. Industrial eye protection. For persons who wear prescription glasses. You must wear approved over the glasses protection or a pair of ANSI or CSA shatterproof glasses with fixed side shields. There are restrictions on the tint of the glasses. So be sure to check with your supervisor. 
Hearing protection. Suitable hearing protection must be worn in identified areas, and where noise has been assessed during a risk assessment to be harmful. Wear your hearing protection properly. You only have one pair of ears. Full body clothing. This could be long-sleeved shirts and pant, or coveralls. This clothing must not be ripped or torn exposing the skin of the worker to a hazard. Specialized clothing may be required based on the work activities being conducted. High visibility clothing. High visibility clothing is required in all LNGC and Boscalis work areas. The selection must be based on the potential risks of the work, such as entanglement. Temporary harness or sash and suspender types are not permitted for general use. Hand protection. Hand protection, including elbow down protection when applicable, must be selected and used based on the known or foreseeable risks associated through the hazard assessment. Gloves must be maintained in good condition and be a minimum of cut resistant level 4. Industrial footwear. Industrial foot protection must meet or exceed the following requirements. CSA approved protective footwear grade 1. Look for the green triangle. Be 150 mm or 6 inches in height for ankle protection and support. Be maintained in good repairs with openings in the body or sole. Access can be denied for poor footwear. Have an cold weather tread and sole. Specialized PPE. During the work activities, you may be required to wear or use specialized PPE. This may include, but is not limited to, personal gas detection monitors, respiratory protective equipment, fall protection equipment, personal flotation devices. Remember, the PPE you wear for your task may be more stringent based on the hazards and risks associated with the work. All right. Let us move on to the HSSE communications section. This will review some of the ways information is communicated during all work activities. A crucial part of any effective workplace is communication. It should be ever present in any working environment, whether it be an office or a construction site. Communication aids productivity, health and safety and employees' participation, all of which are important for a successful project. Communicating safety expectations is vital in ensuring a incident fee workplace and a successful project. It is not only important that you speak to be understood, but that you speak so as not to be misunderstood. All personnel must be able to read and communicate verbally in English. NINA Startup Meetings. The project manager is responsible for all NINA startup meetings, and these will be done prior to the start of execution activities. Attendees may include LNGC, contractors, subcontractors and relevant personnel. The NINA startup session is about doing. Where teams are to define their safety objective on how they want to make a success of NINA on the project and or within their team. This requires teamwork and team leadership. Seeking a team objectives with supporting actions to generate ideas and safety energy is one of the drivers of our NINA program. Other drivers include. Team reflection. Dialogue on project-based NINA issues. Team building. Working towards a common NINA objective with supporting actions. Look for the NINA action poster on site and have a read. There is good information contained on each. Daily pre-start meetings. Managers and supervision will conduct daily documented pre-start meetings with their respective employees prior to engaging in work activities at the start of each shift. This brief daily meeting may be job-specific and review general toolbox topics in accordance with project procedures. These are anticipated to be no longer than 15 minutes in duration, however, may take longer depending on the tasks being discussed. A meeting can cover a wide assortment of topics such as Project HSSE communications Incidents reviews Environmental conditions Scope of work Permits required Hazard assessments Specialized PPE safety data sheets. Workplace inspections. Management of change. Toolbox meetings. 
The works managers or superintendents will conduct documented toolbox meetings with their respective direct supervision and relevant personnel weekly or before high-risk activities. Toolbox meeting provide an excellent means of directly informing your fellow workers on accident prevent and stimulating an exchange of ideas. Get the team thinking about safety. These are anticipated to be no longer than 10 minutes in duration, however, may take longer depending on the tasks being discussed. Toolboxes are also used to explain the outcome of a job hazard analysis and complement the permit to work or fleet management system. Weekly HSSE meetings. HSSE crew meetings led by either managers or supervisors. The meeting's topics may be provided by the HSSE manager, but meeting leaders are expected to select meeting topics relevant to the work scope and site conditions. Meetings will generally last 30 to 45 minutes with a designated representative in attendance to ensure compliance and quality of delivery. The meeting allows for providing information about on-site issues, including general health and safety topics, such as incidents or issues that have occurred. Outcomes from any investigations to prevent incidents from reoccurring. General subjects of interest relevant to the work activities. Project updates. Feedback on concerns or issues will be reviewed and communicated in a timely manner. Records will be retained by the respective and shall be available for review by HSSE manager or coordinators on request. Safety leadership meetings or time out for safety. The HSSE manager is responsible for the safety leadership meeting that are scheduled monthly on the project. Vessel masters. Superintendents. Managers. Vendors and suppliers and relevant personnel will be invited. There is a wide range of topics that may be discussed. Many of these items will be reviewed in daily meetings or weekly communication sessions. Joint Health and Safety Committee Joint Health and Safety Committees are an excellent means of consultation with the organization or project. These committees can help identify workplace health and safety responsibilities, establish positive attitudes, and assist with reducing or eliminating workplace injuries or diseases. Joint health and safety committees are mandated with the WorkSafe BC regulations, and the project will establish a site committee. The Joint Health and Safety Committee will meet monthly and be scheduled within the HSSE activity calendar. Each activity work site, location or vessel will be required to have representation. The Joint Health and Safety Committee will establish terms of reference which will outline how the committee will function. If you are interested in participating, ask your supervisor or an HSSE representative. Safety stand downs. Stand downs may be held periodically to allow management, either from Boscalis or the client to address safety issues directly with workers. A safety stand down can be implemented when there is a high potential risk incident learning to be communicated, in response to an incident or in response to adverse safety trends. A safety stand down lead by management can be an effective mechanism to communicate on key safety issues and demonstrate management's commitment to HSSE Boscalis site wide safety stand downs involving a suspension of all work activities and may be conducted at the instruction of the project manager or client in consultation with the HSSE manager. A safety stand down can take place at any time, and may be in response to a major incident, or as a result of safety or productivity successes. It can take place once, for a day or a week, or on a monthly basis. The important thing is to make time for safety, no matter when that might be. We have just finished video 3 of the 5 part series. We are now in the home stretch. Take a few minutes to recharge and stretch, and I will chat with you in module 4.